Forty years ago, I had the pleasure of coming into the Salt Lake Valley uh, to go to school, attracted by this incredible mountain setting, and a community that was so hospitable, I think that everyone who, who came there felt welcomed. One of the great assets we have as a city is that we have this natural environment of mountains on both sides of our valleys. Uh, we have access to recreational opportunities, to the provision of our water that gives us immediate access and opportunities that are seldom seen or felt in certainly any other community in this country or in most places around the world. It gives us our central sense of place. When I ran for office several years ago, uh, in part because of my planning background, uh, I was determined to set an agenda for what I wanted to accomplish if I was elected. And three years ago when I ran again, I pulled together people in our community and said, let's look at the theme of livability and how we can move our city really to the next level of success. Uh, we looked at our economic prosperity. Uh, we looked at our energy, how we use energy, how we interact with our environment. Uh, we looked, as Mayor Coleman was talking about, at the educational opportunities that every child deserves and what we can do from the city side to strengthen those opportunities. We wanted to look at equality and justice so that every resident in our community felt welcomed, included, and had equal opportunity. We wanted to look at our downtown core as the cultural and artistic gathering place for the whole region and how we could tie features together and add to what we were doing. And we looked at how we are connected, our mobility. And today, I want to focus particularly on mobility. Mobility being how we get around, how we connect our neighborhoods, how we connect our neighborhoods to downtown, and how we connect our downtown and city with the broader region. And for us in Salt Lake City, we are defining that as drive if you want and you must, but let's not make that necessarily the best or easiest way to get around. So we have, as an increasing number of communities across the country, adopted as a core theme for us, complete streets. And complete streets means that we look not only at getting cars on roads, uh, how, it's how we deal with transit, how we provide for bikes, how we provide for pedestrians. And in this shot, you see one street that was between our downtown and our airport that was in a poorer part of our city, that was unattractive, and that was not a welcoming place for anyone other than to drive through. And as we rebuilt the street, which is a major arterial between our downtown and our airport, for light rail going out to the airport, we said, let's completely redo this street. That means having the light rail running down the center of the street. It means reducing, in our case, the number of lanes. We've got really wide streets in Salt Lake City. Uh, and providing for bikeways on the street. It meant that off street, instead of a sidewalk, we would have a 10-foot wide shared path for cyclists and for pedestrians. It meant redoing the lighting so they, it was attractive and burying our power lines and completely redoing the landscaping along the street. The changes have occurred virtually overnight along that street when that light rail line opened a year ago. In one two block area, we have over 1,000 new residential units. We've got new stores moving in. We've got others looking to invest so much more. And it helps show us that when we invest properly, in our infrastructure, in our mobility, that it attracts and provides for a whole different living environment. 
It's all, of course, not just about providing the right infrastructure. It's also about making transit and other forms of transportation so much more accessible. So when I came into office, we were putting $50,000 a year into our bikeways. In our budget last year, we have over $2 million a year going into bikeways, and this year it will be more. And at the same time, our budgets have gone down. So it's a matter of reprioritizing what we do to give our community what they want. And in one year, bicycle use in our city went up over 27%. At the same time, we need to make transit more affordable. So we started in March of this year a pass program, an annual pass program that the city sponsors with our transit agency where there's a 70% reduction in the cost of transit passes to encourage transit use, and we're having thousands of people already signing up for that program. As we look at our transportation systems, though, and how we get around and connect with each other, it isn't all just about the, the infrastructure and what we do in a city. It's also about how we make decisions. And we have been, I think, uniquely fortunate in our region to have cooperation around a common vision. It started more than uh, 20 years ago through an effort called Envision Utah, where seeing the growth that was happening in our region and in our state, governmental and business leaders came together and said, we need to plan much better and direct our resources towards the future that we want. And they asked the public and had literally tens of thousands of people involved to tell us, here's how we've developed. If we continue developing, here's what our communities and our region will look like, both in terms of use of land, in terms of what our transportation systems and, and water systems will be, in terms of what they, it will cost. And then here are alternatives, depending on how we change the way we invest in our future and manage as communities where we want to go. To the surprise of most community leaders, the public chose a different course, one that had more compact development, one that had uh, transportation systems that were reoriented towards the complete streets kind of program that we're focusing on so much in Salt Lake City. And in the last 15 years, we've had the largest urban rail projects in the country. We have over 140 miles of new rail. Commuter rail lines going 45 miles in each direction from Salt Lake City. We've had seven new light rail lines open, and then just this last December, open up the restart of a streetcar system that once had 140 miles in Salt Lake City. We're seeing these kinds of things happening all over the country. But what we're seeing in Salt Lake City, I think, has been particularly successful because the community came together and said, here's where we want to go. And when we come back to the community and say, will you invest in this future, they have been consistently passing tax increases on themselves to accomplish the future that they want. So it's involved the business community. It's involved our universities. It's involved governments at all levels. It's involved everyone from local elected officials to planning commissions to neighborhood groups coming together around a common and shared vision and then following through on that, on that commitment. I see a future for Salt Lake City around mobility that I hope is something like what I saw when I was in Vienna a few years ago, where one third of the people get around on, in vehicles, one-third of the people get around using transit, and one-third of the people either walk or ride their bikes. That is a truly balanced transportation and sustainable future for our mobility systems. So we live, obviously, in this gorgeous setting, uh, and we've had tremendous leadership that sometimes has involved great entrepreneurial efforts through our transit agency, which is very unusual, we all know in government. Um, and, uh, and sometimes has involved just pure consensus 
around a, around a common vision. But then we also look at the setting we have in our mountains. We not only have a place uh, that is remarkably diverse, I think it surprises people to know that the majority of the students in our schools are minorities. We have over 100 languages spoken in our schools. Um, and that strengthens us in so many ways. But I also notice in, in my work and in going into schools and classrooms that so many, of, so many of our kids and so much of our population doesn't go into their backyard or mountains. And these mountains are such a unique and valuable opportunity and resource for us and so heavily visited today. We have more visitors in this part of the Wasatch Mountains than go to Yellowstone National Park. It's residents who use it as our backyard, sometimes in the summer to get up into cooler territory and picnic and hike and camp. Uh, in the winter, it's people going to one of our seven international destination resorts. Or going, as I did this last weekend, to backcountry ski where I climb up 2,500 vertical feet and get to ski powder all the way down. But people get around and enjoy and love this, this, this area um, of our state and of our backyards. But it also means that our transportation is badly congested and unsafe. And we've decided that we've got to do the same kind of thing I talked about with Envision Utah, to focus on what our future is going to be with these mountains. So it's a place where you can go for solitude. It's a place you can go for recreation. And it's a place, as it does today, and we hope will continue to provide high-quality water supply for the whole Salt Lake Valley. And on the backside for Park City. We've embarked on a one-year process where we're involving competing interests, the ski resorts, the environmental community whose primary objective is preservation, every local government on both sides of the mountains, our state colleagues, whether that's transportation or our legislature and governor, and the federal agencies who have responsibility for both managing the land and helping us make decisions about our transportation future. And at the end of that one-year process, we all have the same desired outcome, to reach a consensus about how we're going to take, with a population that is expected to double in the next 25 years, how we're going to take these resources and protect them, the opportunities that range from solitude to intensive resort development and cabins, to protect our water supply, and provide for a transportation system that gives people easy access, and maybe the economic opportunity that is not known anywhere in the Americas to connect us all together easily. If we're able to do that in the next year, combine that with what we are doing in our valleys, I'm confident that our region will continue to advance forward at an accelerated pace to both take advantage of these incredible resources that we have, uh, but also take advantage of what we want to make sure we protect uh, for the future. These are remarkable times we live in, and fast-changing fast times with, uh, with some real challenges in front of us. And in Salt Lake, where we're seeing decreasing snowpack in our mountains, uh, where we're seeing this population growing at an incredible rate. Uh, we know that we have to plan for our future, come together around future objectives, and invest accordingly. And if we can do our part, whether we think globally about climate change or the, whether we think locally about the quality of life and how we connect to each other, we're confident we're going to have a bright future. It means all of us working together. It means all of us respecting each other's ideas. Uh, and it means all of us willing to make sometimes hard choices and sometimes unpopular choices in particular segments of the community, uh, but knowing that our future will serve us better. Thank you. <laughs>